Hello, this is Ron Spoya, and I'm the Managing Partner of Stratus Innovations Group, and welcome to our Cloud 101 webinar series, The Economies of Scale of Cloud Computing. The purpose of this webinar is to introduce the concept of economies of scale as it relates to IT services and IT services being provided by um, cloud uh, computing service providers. Um, and the purpose of this is to help put in place at least a framework or, or some sort of, of uh, strategic thinking as it relates to an organization's long-term plans and long-term uh, investments in technology and technology services for their organization um, and putting in place a framework thinking about that long-term, uh, you know, that long-term investment model. So let's begin. This picture, and when we talk about economies of scale, and economies of scale uh, from a cloud computing perspective simply refer to the amount of computational power that a, a cloud provider like Microsoft, like Google, like IBM can bring to the marketplace, um, you know, and possibly above and beyond the economies of scale that any other organization, that an individual organization or even a government entity can possibly do. This picture is uh, uh, the, uh, a picture of Microsoft's cloud computing data center out of Chicago. And each one of these containers contains racks upon racks of thousands of servers. And if you think about the computational power and the computation, computational uh, you know, complexity of each one of these containers, and then multiply that by the number of individual containers that they have throughout their, uh, you know, throughout their facility, throughout their data center. And this picture is just one small part of this data center because this data center is typically the size of football fields, uh, multiple football fields. So uh, the important piece is think about how these cloud computing providers, and I want to set the, the, the baseline of the scale of hardware and software that these cloud providers are purchasing and providing. And think about that and compare and contrast that to your environment um, you know, as you think about your long-term investment decisions from an IT services perspective. So when you think about the cloud and the cloud financial value proposition, the, the financial value proposition of the cloud, it, I look at it a couple of aspects. And the purpose of this is really on the pivot, do I invest in technology on premise or do I uh, uh, look to the cloud to provide those type of uh, technology services? And a lot of the, so I have, a, I have uh, discussions with organizations, they say, gee, I'm, I'm looking to do a hardware refresh, and I'm looking to come and bring, you know, uh, uh, upgrade all of the hardware I have and bring that in-house. Um, and the question I ask is a couple of things. Um, if you could take your core strategic applications and use that hardware refresh, not on the basic blocking and tackling of email and document management and things like that, and if you could extend the life of your data center investments uh, by migrating those commodity workloads to the cloud, would that be a value? So free up all that storage, free up all those servers that are doing commodity workloads now. Would that be valuable? Um, also from the aspect that you think about the economies of scale of what these cloud providers are doing from a purchase perspective, so on and so forth, um, what I think it's important to look at and think about your three to five year cost economics model. And the cost economics model is this chart over here on the left hand side, and I'll go into the specifics of that, but I think it's important to think about what is your three year uh, cost economics model. And also as it relates to extending the life of your data center investments, um, is there value, and, and you know, uh, called what everybody calls focusing on your core competencies? So, is there value focusing your strategic, you know, focusing on your strategic mission critical and differentiate, differentiating technology solutions, and outsourcing all the other commodity utilities to a service provider? Is there value in doing that? And also, when we think about building out. Um, that cost economics model, and going back to that picture of Microsoft's data center, you think about uh, the cloud economics and the cloud, the scale that cloud providers are looking at. It, it involves three different aspects of, uh, you know, of economics and scale. And the first one is supply side data center scale. So again, going back to that Microsoft picture, if you think about the the mass amount and the large, uh, the large. Uh, amount of purchasing that Microsoft does um, on hardware and storage and software, 
um, their cost per unit of server or storage uh, or, or piece of software, um, that volume procurement is, is dramatically, dramatically lower than what someone else could get because they buy on such large, um, you know, large, uh, uh, large volumes. Demand side server utilization. As Microsoft puts more and more users, more and more uh, organizations on a single computer, they're able to get that single computer up to near capacity, 100% utilization of that server. Whereas organizations, their you know, servers typically run at 20, 30, 40%. So you still have additional capacity that may be going unwasted, that may be going wasted from that environment. Of it. So um, the the cloud providers can reach demand side server utilization scale very, very easily because they're putting so many people on a single server. And then finally, um, multi-tenancy. So in the organization, uh, if multiple organizations are signing up for email service from that aspect of it, then Microsoft or Google or IBM um, are putting a large number of customers on a single environment. By having that uh, multiple customer, multi-tenancy customer demand scale, the cost per each new individual customer eventually gets to, near, gets to near zero, and um, and that provides the opportunity for these cloud providers to pass those savings back along to the organizations. So if we think about it pictorially, if you will, in terms of that cost uh, economics model, if we think about, um, and this model kind of dic uh, is stating a couple things, the, the horizontal axis is time. So how long that service has been uh, up and running. So this dashed line would be in-house, an enterprise in their environment. And on the vertical axis could be its cost per computing. It could be cost per mailbox or cost per customer acquisition or cost per order or whatever that is. So what this model is essentially saying is that you know we're saying that, and let's assume this is um, email. It's the email environment. For this enterprise environment, they've had this service up and running for about seven years. And they're able to offer that service at about, you know, a little less than about seven, eight dollars per uh, you know, per user per mailbox. The cloud provider, on the other hand, they've been around for about three years, and they're at about right now at about just at ten dollars or a little bit less uh, per user, uh, you know, per mailbox, if you will. And if you think about it, if you're doing that evaluation today, that enterprise has about a 33% cost advantage. You may say, yep, based on point of time today, it makes sense for us to stay on premise because look at that, that's, you know, it's more cost advantageous for us to do so. However, fast forward one year, that cloud provider is able to aggressively move down their cost economics curve, whereas your internal environment, you're near flat because you've reaped just about as much uh, efficiencies out of your environment, if you will. So in just one year, you know, in just one year period of time, you've gone from a 33% cost advantage to a 33% cost disadvantage. So I think that's important to kind of understand that. And then if you think about it, um, in in subsequent years, that cost disadvantage is going to get more and more and more. So the net is this, and what 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 does all this mean? It's simply that I think it's important to think about this concept of cost economics model when thinking about your investments in IT services to understand where am I, what does my cost model look like, and am I, am I about flat and I've just about got the, the most efficiencies as I can, and versus um, a cloud provider, are they still have a lot of legroom to aggressively move down that cost curve that they can pass along to me such that my cost per computing, cost per mailbox, cost per customer acquisition could be and would be dramatically lower um, over the many, many years uh, by moving to that model. So I think that's important. The point is just simply put in, you know, when you're thinking about doing your strategic planning, um, understand this concept and leverage this concept as you, as you have moving forward. So when you think about, you know, in terms of uh, different scenarios as it relates to cloud computing and what are the ways of reaping those economies of scale, it could be around areas of around you have software or hardware end of life, so um, you're going to have to upgrade and then from that aspect of it. Does it make sense for you to do that upgrade, or should you leverage that cloud provider? You're having stability and performance issues with your existing environment. Um, that means usually you've got to invest in more hardware, or you've got to invest in new hardware, or the new application is going to fix it, or something of that nature. So instead of having to deal with that, leverage the economies of scale 
that the cloud providers can provide because they can traditionally do this with much, much better stability and performance issues, and they back it with significant guaranteed uh, service level agreements from that aspect of it. If you're going through mergers and acquisitions, um, if you think about it and going back to that cloud economics model, you're at a certain level. Well, all of a sudden, you've just ramped up and you've acquired uh, you know, another organization, and that's going to make it significantly more complex. So your cost model is probably going to go up for a while as you figure out how do I integrate these two organizations, where the cloud does a fantastic job of saying, let me take that complexity out because they, those organizations can scale up and scale down as needed and do a really good job of integrating the two acquired organizations. If you're involved with a lot of uh, litigation and you have to do a significant amount of e-discovery, um, that's a scenario that we see uh, that uh, really leads itself moving to the cloud. And again, from an economy of scale, uh, more so from the aspect of all of that technology is in electronic format and it's all provided by that manufacturer. So in the, in the key of e-discovery is search. So being able to say under, as it relates to the, these key uh, keywords or topics or um, subject matter or individuals, um, you can easily find a lot of that information very, very easily. And then finally, if you do a lot from an automation of the, your mobile field force, um, you're going to have to make the purchasing of that technologies and services in that aspect of it. Why not leverage those same that same functionality that the cloud providers have, um, and again, reaping their economies of scale um, you know, from that aspect of it. Um, that concludes this, this webinar. Um, again, the purpose of this webinar was just simply to, to, as you think about investing in technology services moving forward, um, think about what are your economies of scale of purchasing and economies of scale of, of, uh, of hardware and uh, software capacity and things of that nature. And think about that strategically from the aspect of what makes sense over the long term um, and, and putting that into the framework of um, what your long term uh, technology investments can look like. So as it relates to next steps, um, you know, we have webinars on the introduction to cloud computing and, and security, cloud security if you're interested in. We can do 30-day, no cost, no risk pilots for you to, to uh, kick, kick the tires, if you will, of what that technology looks like, what that security model look like. Um, as it relates to the financial aspects of it and the economies of scale, um, our cloud assessments, we deal with the technology requirements of cloud assessments, but probably more importantly, from a financial perspective, is there a positive value proposition from, uh, you know, from moving to the cloud? What does that, con what are your economies of scale? What do your cost economics look like? What does that look like over three years? And how does that compare to the cloud provider? And that's part of our assessments. Uh, and finally, if you're interested in contacting us, info at stratusinnovations.com or www.stratusinnovations.com or phone us 614-939-1912. That concludes uh, this webinar uh, on the economies of scale of cloud computing. We hope you enjoyed this and we hope this has been informative. Thank you for your time and have a great day.